everyone and welcome back to global education zone and in this episode we are going to be dealing with a first part of a series we're doing on trigonometry so trigonometry is basically that aspect i talked about when in the first episode of this mathematics for senior secondary school one in this channel and in this channel and in this um course of now and in this course of mathematics so today we'll be talking about how to solve right angles and in the first part i'm talking about the derivation of your trigonometric ratios which are your sine ratio your cos ratio and your tan ratio then we'll also be talking about the um the complementary angles of each of these angles then lastly we'll be talking about your pythagoras theorem we're talking about the derivation of Pythagoras theorem. Then finally, we're talking about how to look for the squares and the square roots of numbers using your logarithm table or your four figure table, whichever, whichever way you like it. Now, let's start from the first part of this video, which is your trigonometric ratios. Now, in a previous ratio, in, sorry, in a previous um, video of this channel and one of the first um, series of um, in algebraic processes, we talked about. Um, so rather on, on trigonometry in the in the introductory video i talked about the fact that um in trigonometry these um we have three ratios which are sine and cos and tan of an angle right now the sine of an angle we said it is equal to sine is equal to opposite over adjacent sorry opposite over hypotenuse then we have the fact that cos of an angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse then lastly, we have the fact that the tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. So we have sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now, in your junior secondary school or in your earlier education, you should have met these um, ratios. And these ratios, well, today we're talking about the complementary angles. So, what's the complementary angle? Do you know it? Now, if you do not know it, I will let you know that a complementary angle is the angle which when added to another angle. So rather, we can also define it as a complementary angle of an angle is that angle which when added to the initial angle will give 90 degrees. So now, let's give, let me give a simple, simple example. Now, if x is 25 degrees, 25 degrees. Now, let's say what is the complementary angle of x. So we are looking for the complementary angle of x. From our definition, we have that the complementary angle of an angle x is that angle which when added to x will give us 90. So that means when we add the angle to x, x plus that angle, let's call that angle y, is equal to 90 degrees, sorry. Yes, 90 degrees. Complementary angle plus the angle give 90 degrees. So let's make y the subject. y is equal to what? 90 degree minus x. So y will be equal to what? 90 degree minus. What's x? x is 25 degree, right? So I have 90 degree minus 25 degree. So y will be what? 90 minus 25 degrees is what? 65 degrees. So that's good. We have the complementary angle of 25 degrees is 65 degrees. Now, let's draw an, a triangle. In a triangle, we have um, three angles. And these three angles, let's call one of these angles theta. Let's call the other one the complementary angle of theta. Now, in, the, in, in, in a triangle, the sum of the angles is equal to 180. So, when the angles that are not 90, which are not the right angle, they add up to form 90 because 90 plus, this will sum up to 90 because 90 plus 90 will give 180. So, that means if this sum up to 90, then the second angle of a particular angle must be the complementary of that angle because they add up to 90. So that means if you have this as theta, then the complementary of this will be what? 90 minus, minus that angle. That's 90. This will be 90 minus... 90 minus theta now I have this as 90 minus theta so let's move on now that let's look for what is the sine and cosine ratios of each of these so now what's the sign of this angle so of this theta sine theta what sine theta is equal to that opposite over hypotenuse now let's call this one let's call this let's let's name this um this part of of, of let's call this a, let's call this B, let's call this C. Now the sign of angle will what? Opposite over hypotenuse as it's written here. That will be opposite is C over hypotenuse is A. So sin theta is C over A. Then cos theta will be adjacent over hypotenuse. That will be, that will be adjacent. This is adjacent. That's B over A. B over A. Then we have tan theta. 
will be equal to what? Tan, tan is what? Tan of an angle is opposite over adjacent. That's tan theta what? Opposite. That's C over the adjacent is B. Yeah. Now, let's calculate the, the, um, the, um, the trigonometric ratio of the complement or the complementary angles of theta. That will be 90 minus theta. So, sine 90 minus theta what? Sine 90 minus theta will be equal to what? Now, so now changing our perspective, this will be the opposite, that's B, and this is still with the hypotenuse, that's B over A. Then cos 90 minus theta, cos 90 minus theta will be what? Changing our perspective, this will be the, this will be the adjacent and this will be the hypotenuse. So that will be adjacent over hypotenuse, that's C over A. Cos 90 minus theta is C over A. So then lastly, we have that 90 minus theta is what? That's, this will be the opposite and this will be the adjacent. When we are referencing this angle, that will be B over C. Tan, tan 90 minus theta is equal to B over C. From this, you can see that what is the relationship between sin theta, cos theta, tan theta, and their, their complementary angles, which is sin 90 minus theta, cos 90 minus theta, and tan 90 minus theta. You can see that sin theta, C over A, is the same thing as cos 90 minus theta, which is C over A. So that means sin theta is equal to cos 90 minus theta. And that goes the same for cos theta. Cos theta is equal to sin 90 minus theta. So this is the relationship between angles and their complementary angles. So you can look at the relationship. This theory, are the, this, um, this theory and this theory, they are the relationship. You can write it down in your notes if you have not known it till now. And, or you just want to have it as a reference. Now moving on, then we have this tan theta is equal to C over B and tan 90 minus theta is equal to B over C. So that means they are and they are multiplicative inverse. That means tan tan theta will be one over tan 90 minus theta. And then this one over one over tan 90 minus theta is also known as cot. So C O T. So that's tan theta is equal to cot 90 minus theta. That is, these are the relationship between angles in trigonometry and their complementary angles. So now, having established that, let's move on to solving right angles, the next part. So in this episode, we will not be doing any calculation. We'll just be establishing the um, proof and these um, formulas. Now, the next formula we're talking about is Pythagoras theorem. Now I have often talked about on Pythagoras in the previous episode. He was a, an, um, he was, he was an early mathematician who wrote about a theorem. And this Pythagoras theorem states that when you have a right angle triangle, have in mind that we are still solving right angle triangles, right? Now we have a right angle. A right angle triangle is basically a triangle that has one of its three angles as a right angle. Now when we have one of these as a right angles, then this is the hypotenuse H H Y P. This will be the opposite. When we, are, when, when we are considering this angle, this will be the opposite, and then this will be the adjacent. So, Pythagoras theorem simply states that hypotenuse square, the square of the hypotenuse, is equal to the square of the opposite. Opposite square plus the adjacent square. Adjacent square. So, all this in simple English, this means that the square of the hypotenuse is equivalent or equal to the square of the opposite plus the square of the adjacent. Or you can say the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the opposite and the adjacent. So, or you can say the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the opposite and the square of the adjacent. So, this is just how it is in mathematics. So, now let's go about the proof of how did Pythagoras get this um, theorem. So, let's go to a new triangle now. Let's call this, 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 let's have a triangle, A, B, C. A, B, C. And then let's have another triangle, which makes this D. Now, this A, B, C, this is a right angle triangle. So this angle, angle, angle B, A, D is a right angle here. And then we also have angle B, B, C, A as a right angle. And then we have angle A, C, D as a right angle. So we have, so, so we have B, angle, angle B, A, D. Is equal to angle B C A C A is equal to angle A C B A C D. So every of these three angles is equal to 90 degree. So the, these three angles they are all right angles. Now if these three angles are right angles, let's call let's let B D let B D be equal to 2 A. So let's let B D be equal to um, a 
let the length of BC BC is equal to X and let the length of B of CD is equal to Y. That means this whole and this whole base from B to C is X, then from C to D is Y, then from B to D is A. From what I've seen, so that means this will be X, this will be Y. And everything X plus Y is A. So then let's let A be let we're just assigning letters to them. Let A be equals to um, B and let A D equals to C. So this will be B, and this will be C. Now from our Pythagoras theorem, let's say um, next let's assume that that would be enough. Then from this Pythagoras theorem, what we are saying is that the hypotenuse square is equal to the opposite square plus the plus the adjacent square. So, but let's not go into Pythagoras theorem. We are going to do this proof by using sine and cos and tan, which are the trigonometric ratios. Now, the 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 for this angle B, the sine of B is what. The, or rather, the cos of B is what? The cos is adjacent of hypotenuse. So cos B is equal to x over B. And at the same time, that's in this in this triangle A, B, C. Cos B is adjacent of hypotenuse, x over B. At the same time, in this triangle A, B, D is also right angle because angle B, A, D is equal to angle B, C, A is equal to angle A, C, D. They are all 90 degrees. So this is 90 degree, this is 90 degree, and this is 90 degree. So now, in this whole triangle, we can say that cos B will be because of adjacent of hypotenuse. So this will be the adjacent, and this will be the hypotenuse. Now, because B will be equal to, um, let's, let's say, let's take it as um, entirely. That will be adjacent, that's B over. Now, B, B plus D is what? That's x plus y, that will be a. So bd is a. So cos b will be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's b over a. It's still the same thing as b over a. So if x over b is equal to b over a, when we cross multiply, we have ax, ax is equal to b square. Then let's move to cos c. Sorry, let's move to the cos of this angle d. So for in the in this first triangle, the cos Cos of this angle, cos D, will be equal to, in this triangle, A, C, D. Cos D will be equal to adjacent of hypotenuse. That will be equal to Y over C. Then that will still be equal to, in this whole triangle, cos D will be equal to adjacent. This will be the adjacent C over, over A, which is BD. That's C over A. Then when we, when we cross multiply, again, we have um, AY is equal to C squared. So looking at this first equation, we have AX is equal to B squared and AY is equal to C squared. That means, let's say, um, let's add C squared and um, D squared. Let's, that means AX plus AY will be equal to B squared plus C squared. That means A open bracket, X plus Y is equal to B squared plus C squared. But now, in this BD, BD is equal to A, and this A is equal to X plus Y. That means A is equal to X plus Y. So because this entire A is, is, is the addition of X and Y. That means this X plus Y is also the same thing as A. So we have A times A is equal to B square plus C square. So in other, in other words, we have A times A is A square is equal to B square plus C square. That is the derivation of Pythagoras theorem. That means the square of this side, which is this, which happens to be the hypotenuse of triangle A, B, D. The square of this side, which is facing the right angle, the side facing the right angle is also known as the hypotenuse. Now the square of this side, which is A square, will be equal to the square of this opposite side, which is um, B square plus C square. That is hypotenuse. That's um, Pythagoras theorem. Now moving on, let's talk about how do you find the square of numbers, the squares and the square root of numbers. So. Let's see, we'll be talking about that in the next videos. Thank you for watching.